Hey Tubers, welcome back for another adventure. So a while ago I built this fabrication workstation to allow me to more efficiently build things I'm typically building here in the shop. And what we have obviously, you know, belt grinder, um, stone grinder, you know, cut off, drill press, little vise. I hang my grinders here, compressor, and there's the uh, cheap welder. And, you know, it works out well. My only problem, quite honestly, is I have a tendency to bury it in the corner and then it's not handy. But what I want to do today is actually use it to build something that I need. Now, I've been talking about these Honda 250 motors for quite a while, whether they go on an ES or a TRX 250. And what I like to do with these motors, especially when I'm troubleshooting them, is I like to put the Keevan clone PZ27 or 30 carburetor on them. Why do I like to do that? Typically the OEM carburetors are complicated and a little bit finicky. They got a clutch cable instead of just a uh, butterfly choke, or they have a uh, choke cable instead of a butterfly choke. They're just a pain in the neck to use. So to put one of these carburetors on here, right, you need an adapter. Well, here's what the adapter I actually have it plugged right into an intake manifold this is what the adapter looks like I just have an inch and a quarter down to three quarter fitting and you could see I take a brass plate drill holes in it and there we are right this could bolt on or quite honestly I could just slip the fitting out slide it in there and bolt the carb right up to it right easy peasy so um, this is the first adapter I built kind of kludgy kind of a mess and um, it's my experimental adapter but if one actually wants to do a better job at it it's pretty easy to do and let me show you what I'm up to with that so here is a spacer intake a manifold spacer and it's just easier to handle this uh, with your fingers. And what I did was I just took some ordinary graph paper, right? And I placed this spacer down on it. And I did it in such a way that I had um, a, a square, so to speak, centered in that hole, that hole, and the center hole. And I marked that, I mean centered as in center of the circle. So once you do that, you know the center of where all these circles are located. You kind of cut the template out, and then you use your hole punch to go click, 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 and now you have the center of the holes. I need to make two of these, and I think you can see the little divots on here. Get the contrast. You can see that one, that one, and you can kind of see the one in the center, right? So all I need to do now is drill the holes where they are and start stepping them up. By the way, when you're building these things, the bigger the piece of metal you start out with, the better. You're able to hang on to it and so forth. As I'm trying to cut these corners off and all, this little triangle is going to be a pest. So, quite honestly, if you start with a bigger piece of brass or copper, it's just a lot easier. So we have the drill press set up, all ready to go. Right. I'm going to start out with the center hole. I like using an eighth inch bit to start with. And once again, you can see the problem with the small pieces of metal. If the bit really grabs it and starts whipping it about, it's hard to hang on to. My recommendation is get out of the way. Now, 
one just in my case I'm just going to step up those holes one at a time using a step bit till I get to the right size I'm also that template right you can see very quickly that everything is centered up just the way you want it I actually need two of these so I'm gonna get the second one ready to go center punch easy enough I save these templates because I use them frequently now when I build these, if I decide to, I can leave them right on the engine along with the carburetor. I can actually just leave a PC27 or 30 on one of these 250 engines um, and just make that the carburetor that I'm gonna, going to use. I won't get the full performance, um, but it'll function, it'll work. And as a matter of fact, what we'll do is when we um we're gonna actually put one on the burned up bike and we'll we'll race it about a little bit so you guys can see how well it performs so we're just going to use the drill press to step the size of the hole up I think I need to be bigger than that. Even a touch bigger than that. It's easier when you drill up against wood as I am. And I think that might be about where I need to go. One more for this. There we have it. As you can see the holes are all exactly where they need to be right so you guys could see I just stepped up the holes a little bit and we're nice and centered and everybody's happy I have one more size or two to go with the center hole I need to get the bigger bit there's the lot the larger bit all the holes are drilled. I want to make sure I'm showing them to you. And there you go. It's all set up. Ready to go. So I took the little plastic flange and a marker and kind of colored it in. Now I just have to remove the copper. I just want to warn you, as you're trying to cut this loose, cut these pieces loose, right, this gets hot as heck. How much of it do you have to remove? Well, it kind of depends on how good you want it to look and so forth. Obviously, uh, my um, experimental one, <laughs> I mean, this looks like a hack, but it works. I haven't found a spot where it doesn't fit and work, so how much of that material do you want to remove? Once again, it's up to you, and how neat do you want to do it? That's up to you, but I do warn you, it gets hot, and, um, you know, kind of the more of it you remove, the more flimsy you get, so keep that in mind. So you guys could see here that I um, chucked the what I want to cut into this um, it's actually a picture frame vice so to speak and I'm just gonna cut along here with the grinder 
remove that material. I have this kind of piece of extra brass that's going to be a little bit of a uh, template so I don't go too far. You can see the edge of the marker. Here we are. Time to do some cutting. I'm just going to continue to do that until I get the shape close to what I want. And once again, please wear your protective wear. I've, uh, I've been to the doctor a couple of times to get metal removed from my eyes. Um, not enjoyable. Not enjoyable at all. So here we have it. I deliberately went a little bit big. And it looks... I mean, perfect. A plus now. Looks pretty good. So I'm just going to clean it up a little bit more and we'll be done with this. We can start soldering. Okay, we got the belt sander rolling about. A little clean up action. So good. Oops, the fingernail. It does get warm. You're gonna to want to pay attention to that. So there we are. I think we more or less have it. So here's this secret fitting here. So this is a one and a quarter to three quarter reducer. They cost about eight bucks at Home Depot. Right, that allows you to put it in. And it is a little loose. And you can make that up with tape. Or, in my case, I cut this back a little bit. Right, so now you have a ring of copper. I put a little slid in it then I put that on the outside um, and use a little solder to fill the slit and that um, that straightens it all out and you can see it you can see it on here right you can see how I filled in the little slot with solder you want to be as neat as possible um, when you're doing your soldering because if you end up with solder across here, a nice big booger on here, you're going to have a tough time making it seal. You can see also that I went a little further out. I have a little extra sticking out here. And that, that just makes it so that it, it goes into the carburetor. The carburetor has an O-ring on it, so it seals really well. So, it's done. This worked. And it's a good experimental one. And this is the one I just built. This amount of solder right there is enough to seal when I put the whole thing together. And I don't know, I think it looks pretty good. Remember when you build something like this, you really want to clean it off well because you have various abrasives involved. I used, you know, a little bit of emery cloth to uh, clean it up. I did use the grinder until it threw the belt in my face. Luckily I was wearing my protective wear. And here we are. Let me show you when it's all installed. That's what the custom intake manifold looks like now that it's all installed. And quite honestly as you start getting I'm about five foot away. Can you see it? And if I double that to 10 feet, can you? Really not noticeable. So with that, one can, can convert a um, Honda TRX 
250 to run on a PZ27 or a PZ30 carburetor. What you get if you uh, click up toward the PZ30 and depending if you also put the carburetor on there for the um, for the Recon 250 what you get is a fuel pump and the fuel pump will enhance your performance a little bit and as a matter of fact if you do a good job making the manifold right um, make it as big as possible so it breathes as well as possible but if you do a good job um, putting together the intake manifold as uh, big as possible and you go with the Recon 250 carburetor it bolts on just like this except it's got a little fuel pump thing going on and with that I, I really don't think one would lose all that much performance over the OEM carburetors for these things. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed um, the series of videos on fabrication. You will see this carbon intake manifold go on the burnt up model outside the TRX 250 that uh, caught fire. And um, we'll see how well it runs. We'll get romping on it in no time. I want to thank everybody for dropping by to watch and comment and subscribe. Please remember to keep your feet down, your heads up, and get out there and enjoy each and every day. Bye now.